Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I particularly love this particular story of Mary Magdalene being the first to experience the resurrected Lord. There's something about Mary Magdalene's personality which captures Christians in every age. Perhaps it's because she's so approachable. She's so much like you and me. Early on in the tradition, not necessarily from Scripture itself, but in the tradition, Mary Magdalene was perceived as a woman with a past. And somehow in this past, she had found Jesus and asked for forgiveness from him, and he had granted it, and she forever became a faithful follower. She was so appealing that during the Middle Ages, churches all over the place were named after her. There were more than 450 churches in Britain alone named after Mary Magdalene. Colleges at Oxford and Cambridge named after her. No other woman of the New Testament except Mary, Jesus' mother, had more notoriety or more appeal, and that's still true in our own day. I understand that Jesus Christ Superstar is being aired on one of the channels this evening. I don't consider it a new rock opera. It's quite old now, but it is a remarkable rock opera, and Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote some of his best music for Mary Magdalene, particularly I Don't Know How to Love Him, which has been a poignant song which has appealed to Christians in e ever since. And Cousin Zacchaeus, in writing his Last Temptation of Christ, makes Mary Magdalene almost as important a figure in that novel as Jesus himself. Something is appealing about Mary. I think it may be her faithfulness. She goes even before dawn to the tomb. She goes there because she is drawn to the Lord she has loved. And she finds the tomb empty, so she runs and tells the disciples, and Peter and John accompany her back to the tomb. And after they ascertain that the tomb is indeed empty, Mary stays on. In her grief, she's perhaps rooted to the spot where she last knew that Jesus lay. In any event, her faithfulness is rewarded, first in a vision of angels and then by Jesus himself. Now it's helpful to note that in the Gospel of John, in addition to the lovely narratives which we have, all of these narratives are highly symbolic and they actually have some deep theological points. So when Jesus appears to Mary, she mistakes him initially. She doesn't recognize him, not until he speaks her name lovingly, Mary. And then she realizes who it is, and like any other natural human being, she wants to embrace Jesus. But Jesus says, no, no, do not hold on to me. What's going on here? Do not hold on to me. It's what you and I would certainly do if Jesus came into our presence. During his earthly life, Jesus was limited like you and me in time and space. So he lived in the first century in Palestine. When he was in Jerusalem, he could not simultaneously be in Galilee. But the resurrected Jesus is not limited by time and space. He is everywhere, sequentially, and at the same time. He is here in this building today. He is everywhere with us. One of the features of this gospel, which is also symbolic, is the fact that the empty tomb has never proven the resurrection. Let me be clear about that. The empty tomb has never really spoken to the resurrection. The proof of the resurrection is Jesus in the hearts of Christians in every age. Jesus known to people in this congregation. Jesus here with us today. 
Jesus inspiring Christians in every generation. That's the proof of the resurrection, that Jesus lives in us. So if you've come here as a faithful member of this congregation, you already know something of that living Jesus. And you have undoubtedly come here to this place because you expect you will meet him again. Where will you meet him? Well, you may meet him in the glorious music, not only the organ and the choir, but also the timpani and brass, or in the beautiful way in which this altar is arranged with flowers. Or perhaps you will meet him during the service at the passing of the peace, or before or after the service as you share with someone else, making a new friend or greeting an old friend in this place. All those of you who are regular parts of this church may well ask, uh, accept that you will meet Jesus in some special way in this day. It happens over and over again. And perhaps you're here out of a great spiritual hunger. Perhaps you're searching for something. Take courage. Jesus has brought you to this place. And it is very much possible that you might meet him, yes, here in this place on this day. But be aware, he isn't always immediately recognizable. So you may need to listen carefully. Listen carefully that he is calling your name. Or perhaps you are here simply to please someone else. Jesus likes that in you. Jesus recognizes the importance of love. If love has drawn you, the love of another person has drawn you to this place, be aware that Jesus is also calling your name on this day. And you may stand a good chance of seeing him and feeling him here in our presence, alive and well. There's one more detail of this story that I want to comment on, and that is, why is it that Mary Magdalene didn't first recognize Jesus when he approached her at the tomb. It may be that she was so overcome with her grief that she really couldn't see him, but it may go deeper than that. It's interesting to me that this is also true in my second most favorite Easter story, which is the story of the road to Emmaus, where a group of disciples walk for several hours with the risen Jesus without recognizing him. In both cases, Mary and these disciples on the way to Emmaus don't recognize Jesus until he does something which reminds them of his intimacy with them. He speaks lovingly her name, Mary. He breaks bread with those disciples who he has walked from Emmaus with. Somehow in the intimate connection, our eyes are opened. There's also another theory that I find very appealing, that Charles Williams, who was an author and theologian of the early part of the 20th century, suggests. He suggests that the resurrected Lord is Jesus, a composite of everything he ever was, everything he could be. So it's the freshness of youth and the agony on the cross and every aspect of Jesus' life so he doesn't look like a picture that might have been taken at even any given stage, but is in fact a composite of all who Jesus was and is. In any event, the important thing is that he is in our midst, quite approachable and forever calling our name. Will you listen for him in this service? Will you hear him in the music? Will you see him in the beauty of this day? And especially, will you see him in love shared in community? Amen.